Well, thank you. Very, very nice to be here. Um, AV to Biomedical, there we go, is a platform technology that uh, is really built around a um, core technology of manufacturing human cells. So our history, my history, has always been one of um, high purity derivation of human stem cell populations. You know, stem cell can become anything in your body. The real trick, the real challenge to the entire sector is trying to get cells to differentiate into something in purity, which of course lowers a regulatory bar, lowers cost of goods. That process sounds simple for a lot of drug development. It is not simple for human cellular therapy where contaminants lead to cost of goods that are out of control and regulatory burdens that are nothing short of disabling for a program. So that's um, where I have concentrated as a professor, as a CEO of a company. And from that, we have emanated four platforms from that core set of technologies, including ophthalmology, oncology, CNS, and skincare. Uh, we're all venture backed. It's, our board is, uh, is quite mature with the prior CFO of Kite coming in, uh, Paul Jenkinson, as well as the prior uh, president of Allergan, a big pharma, helping us uh, guide this company through with a terrific scientific advisory board. The core technology, our core asset is really one of cancer. Uh, you probably know that cancer, every cancer, is born from a cancer stem cell or a tumor initiating cell type that comprises about 1% of every tumor and it births 99% junk, a bunch of mutated cells that look a lot like the rest of your body. Those tumor initiating or cancer stem cells, that 1% can migrate through, metastasize and grow other tumors, but they can also migrate to one's bone marrow and sleep for up to seven years, it's thought, that's about an average, where the patient may go through chemotherapy, a radiation, surgical resection, only to have one of those sleepers wake up, drop a number of daughters, some become tumors, some become sleepers, and therein lies recurrence. The discovery of that cancer stem cell or tumor initiating cell was in doubt, undoubtedly, incontrovertibly, the greatest advance in the cancer field. And we're the first company in the world to be able to isolate those from a bit of resected tumor. So at a, on the top left there, you can see a surgical resection. We start with stage three recurrent or stage four cancers when patients are getting something taken out of them. That uh, sample is then sent to our lab. It can be as fine as a small needle aspirate. And in fact, we're developing a method of isolating these from the blood. But in any case, uh, we get a little bit of that tumor and three weeks later, we have that patient's purified tumor initiating cells. There's a few groups who've done that before. Um, no one's been able to propagate and amplify those cells besides us and use them in an immunotherapy. Your cancer stem cells are different from mine. Every patient, every human that has cancer, and you all have cancer stem cells in you right now that you're fighting, they all have thousands of unique mutations that no one else has, it's necessitating a personalized therapy. While that process is going on, we do a mini leukophoresis, a single two-hour leukophoresis where we isolate the monocytes. This is a tool out of a toolbox, and we end up with a um, young dendritic cell population which we feed irradiated and lysed cancer stem cells from the patient, and that is our product. It's a series of subcutaneous needle injections, um, making it very, very easy on the hospital. Our outcome measures are simply survival or death. We thereby have a technology that presents not one antigen from a population or two or three that may drift in and out of vogue with one's cancer, as genetic drift is a known component of cancer. We have thousands of antigens that are expressed. So it is a fingerprint of that person's cancer that is expressed by these things. It's the entire spectrum of the antigenic load of the cancer stem cell that is loaded into the dendritic cells. And we know that those cell populations have been very, very good at delivering um, a, uh, an immune response. The field where it has failed in dendritic cell therapies is when it's loaded with the wrong thing. It, it initiates a very robust attack, but against what? Whatever you load the dendritic cell with. If that is a single protein that goes in and out of expression, perhaps in 5% of a population like dendrion, well then you have a limited market. If it is thousands of antigens from that patient's own cancer stem cells, well then you have a very, very 
good, targeted immune response. Uh, we have uh, several clinical trials going for in two countries. We're under a commercialization review for a melanoma treatment in Japan that's going very, very well. Just brought on uh, lead investigators from Keio University. Uh, we have eight sites recruiting for ovarian cancer in the United States. We have six for GBM. Uh, ovarian cancer is about a third done. Oh, uh, GBM is about 90% finished in our phase twos. We were just awarded a combination with um, our treatment with PD-1 inhibitors as we discovered that 100% of our non-responders have 150,000 times more PD-1s in their bloodstream. So in a single cycle review, we're approved for that clinical trial. We've self-imposed a hold on liver and renal just because we have our hands full. Our data is uh, very good. It's, uh, this is actually the highest efficacy that's ever been reported in the cancer literature at a 72% survival rate at two years and a 54% survival rate at five years. We've done a lot of mechanism of action work, so we understand a lot. These tumor initiating cells, we do 34,000 gene exomic analysis. We know exactly what is mutated in each patient. We can then cross that with HLA profiling and we can determine what are the driver antigenic mutations within these patients' tumor initiating cells. We have, so we have full mechanism of action now. We can take the blood out of the patients and look at 450 different markers. This is what a normal patient looks like with melanoma prior to our treatment. The immune system is non-clustered. This is a principal component analysis. It's all over the map. The immune system is not responding to their cancer. But if they get our treatment, watch the clustering. You see a very, very strong cytotoxic Th1, Th17 response and a very strong immunoglobulin response that clearly correlates and is a predictive marker of efficacy for survival. In our GBM patients, we see a unique but very, very repeated and um, you know, patient to patient, everybody who sir, is, is uh, doing well shows this response. And the bottom line of that is that um, we've got about 90% of these patients done. We took a 30% sample size, looked at blood over multiple time points before treatment at multiple time points after treatment. And we see a progression of two things about 75% of our patients are showing an appropriate immune response that fights GBM. That's a type two hypersensitivity response that the literature has shown is what you need to do. Every patient who does well with GBM, the few, all have a type two hypersensitivity response, but that's only a couple percent. We have 75, we've induced this in 75% of our patients. Those same patients have decline of tumor markers 65% of our patients are showing a decrease over time progressively of 27 different tumor markers. So we're very ecstatic that uh, the trial interim data seem to be doing very well. Our cost of goods is under $20,000 per patient, fully burdened. That's an extraordinary uh, advantage we have over other immune therapies. Another program that we have that's imminently preclinical is a retinal program. We're one of three groups in the world that have been able to take stem cells and make three-dimensional retina. So these are layered with photoreceptor progenitors, bipolar cells, etc. We've transplanted these into blind animal models and restored vision, shown electrophysiological hookup right to the superior colliculus, shown dyes tracing through synaptic traces to uh, show total integration of this tissue. And this is now at a point where we've just received a a very large government grant to finalize the manufacturing for clinical work. So it's a lockdown manufacturing procedure with no batch to batch variability, very good cost of goods. And we're actually soliciting partners now for both therapeutic and drug development on this program as the product is now mature and ready. We also have a uh, central nervous system uh, product that is very, very unique. Having been in cellular therapy my whole life, um, I understand, I think uh, I'm one of the more experienced in f uh, trying and all the difficulties one has with regulatory agencies when you're trying to transplant cells into, into humans because oftentimes they don't go away. You can't stop taking the drug. The cell will stay in there and do its harm if it's doing harm, do its good if it's doing good. A cellular product is, is a very high cost of goods and it's a very high regulatory bar. So what we decided to do is we took our stem cell high purity technologies, we made pure human neural, not neuronal, no glial cells, sorry, 
not neural, no glial cells. These are all neurons, human neurons by the billions. And rather than injecting those things with trophic support, we actually grow them to a developmental stage in purity, 99.6% purity, expressing phenomenal amounts of, for example, Wnt proteins, very, very high amounts. And rather than transplanting the cells, we use a cyclodextran technology to actually eat chunks of those cells with membrane-bound factors as a non-cellular neurotrophic delivery system for all central nervous system diseases. We have dumped this onto uh, uh, brain cells in a dish, human brain slices in a dish, and we see a tremendous amount of neurotrophic growth, all the appropriate uh, um, expression and of um, elongation and markers of neurotrophic effect uh, without any um, uh, tumor formation that you may get from a young cell. There are no cells in there. And uh, we've done several um, animal studies uh, with statistical significance showing that they survive. 83% um, survival versus 17% in control. That's pretty phenomenal. As well as they're having uh, tremendous um, uh, cognitive and behavioral benefit. Uh, lastly, I'd like to tell you something that also emanates from the core technology of high purity cellular differentiation. We have launched a skincare product. 100% of the proceeds supporting people, the treatment of people with cancer. It's a phenomenal marketing message. It also happens to be true. And it is a differentiator which has really uh, resulted in the launch and penetration of the market in a, a really record setting way. We have a, a consumer brand and a medical doctor brand. Uh, very, very simply, we've had three uh, independent third-party clinical studies of over 175 people, you know, FDA compliant, the whole works. Um, uh, all three studies replicate one another perfectly. It's actually more data, I'm told, than anyone's ever produced on a skincare product. And what you see is a tremendous bettering of the face because what we're doing is we're taking human stem cells, making them in for the first time in the world to the precursor to human skin. No one's ever done that before. So now we have billions and billions of human skin precursors, precisely the same cells that you were covered with in utero when you were making skin. Those cells do in a dish what they did on you when you were growing up in your mother's womb. They secrete 670 factors every single factor relevant to human skin development, all in the natural, relative, physiological concentrations. That's new. No one's ever done that before. Stem cells from a plant have nothing to do with a lock and key receptor system in your skin. Stem cells from a pig have nothing to do with a lock and key receptor systems in your face. You need human. You can't go throwing on massive amounts of EGF or FGF because you'll get problems. You push your young skin precursors and they freak out and they divide and you get skin problems. You would induce skin cancers. You need a perfectly balanced, natural, physiological environment that you had when you were making skin. This is the first product in the world that has that. Uh, three clinical studies, very, very good data. We've just launched this. Uh, we partnered with the world's largest skincare marketing company recently, Guthy Renker. They only take a new uh, partner every two to four years. We just partnered with them, so we're preparing for a massive worldwide launch. We've signed QVC United States, the largest distribution channel in the world for cosmetics. We've been on QVC Japan for the last year with record-setting sales. We just signed up 9,300 beauty salons in Japan, as well as a company like Amazon that sells to 1.4 million uh, Japanese. So 100% of this is supporting the company. It's a unique business model, and um, uh, it's, it's working very well. We are just um, pulling together another funding round right now for which we do have lead investors, and um, it's a very um, exciting time for the company. Thank you very much.